Well, my mind is blown. Uh, I think we just heard four amazing lightning talks, um, really illustrating how machines are learning and talking and asking questions, how robots are doing this, how machines are great at predicting things. But what I'm really interested in, in terms of the story, is what does this really mean for us? And so it's with great pleasure that I introduce this next section of our story, which is really a conversation about how, what does this mean when machines can do all of these things for ourselves, for our careers, for work? And I had this uh, incredible experience a few weeks ago. I was at a conference with a thousand teenagers aged 13 to 16 focusing on learning about these exponential technologies. And I had the privilege of hosting a conversation with about 15 of these kids about what does AI mean for my career. And so I'm super excited to introduce Naveed Nafu, who runs the Knowledge Society, uh, to interview two of these emerging leaders about what AI means for their career. And following that, uh, we are going to have uh, two experts on this topic. So Gary Boyles, who is the uh, chair of the Future of Work for Singular Singularity University. Who knows what Singularity University is? A few of you, or a lot of you. It's, uh, it's really focused on exponential technologies and how they're going to impact us. And Gary is going to uh, interview, or Krista uh, is going to interview Gary, and they're going to have a discussion. Krista is the managing director of the future of work of learning, the future of work learning at Mars. So we got a really exciting next part of the story. And let's give a hand uh, for Naveed and Gurav and Ananya. Great. Testing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Candice. Hey, everyone. My name is Naveed. Um, this is Ananya. Ananya, how old are you? 15. And Gaurav, how old are you? 14. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, we always talk about AI, and I think a lot of the conversations with AI happen with people that are, you know, usually older than 20, 25 years old. But when we think about a lot of the implications of AI, it's, it's really uh, more applicable to their generation. And so, you know, we thought, let's talk about that with people who are actually going to be experiencing it. Um, you know, my background, I started a company called AirPost in the Valley. It was acquired by Box.com. Um, I actually started Box's AI team uh, and, and grew it for a couple of years before I started the Knowledge Society, which is um, supposed to be an incubator to basically build the next Elon Musk of the world to solve the most important problems through really ambitious, driven kids. Um, and I think a lot of the times when we talk about AI, we, we kind of talk about it as one thing, but really, you know, like, um, like we've heard today, AI is a tool, a tool to help us in various industries. So Ananya, why don't you tell us what are you interested in and how AI might impact that industry? Right, thank you Naveed. So I'm really interested in genomics and gene editing. After learning about it, I went really deep and a couple of years ago in 2012, to pro provide a little bit of background. Um, MIT invented this technology called CRISPR-Cas that is a really cheap, effective way for us to edit our genes to take out hereditary mutations that can cause um, hereditary diseases. So now I actually work at SickKids Hospital in Dr. Ronald Cohn's lab um, with the help of Zenia Ivakain. And uh, together, uh, we actually managed to delete the gene for muscular dystrophy, which is a type of hereditary paralysis that causes um, paralysis in one in 150,000 males. And we cured that in mice. And it was pretty interesting to me um, how in a field that's seemingly completely isolated from AI and machine learning, we actually did use it in our day-to-day -day research. So before and after we treated the mice, um, we used AI to see the quantitative differences by measuring the amount of collagen and fibrosis in muscle cells um, because we wanted to find a quantitative difference before and after CRISPR. And then I did, I looked into genomics news and AI is literally everywhere. So just a couple of weeks ago, a company called um, Veronas Genetics acquired a seven-year-old AI company. And what they do is they uh, sequence DNA and try to find correlations between DNA and the mutations that it can cause if it's mutated. And the way to do that is by analyzing huge amounts of data sets. 
So by using the AI company they acquired, they were able to create these connections which they're working on right now. There's also Desktop Genetics, which is a gen genetic company in the UK, and they use AI for CRISPR libraries to kind of predict if I delete this gene, um, what's the best way to do it so I can prevent inaccuracies to make sure things don't go accidentally wrong. And even in the Mars building here, there's Desktop Genetic, or Deep Genomics, and Deep Genomics is another amazing company that merges both AI and genomics. Uh, and they also try and find DNA sequences, new, the order of nucleotides that could potentially cause mutations. So it's really interesting to think how even in areas that are completely isolated, it's very important to understand the basis of AI so that you can become a thought leader and be ahead of these um, new innovations that are happening in probably every field or every career path that you guys are in. So AI is no longer a thing that only computer scientists, nerds need to learn. But really, it's really great if we all understand the basics of it so that we can just be on top of it, understand what we're doing, and push things forward. So, you know, that's really interesting because I know a couple years ago, or even today, a lot of the conversations are about self-driving cars replacing things like taxi drivers. But here, we're learning about how it's going to advance really new industries like genomics. But when we talk about replacing jobs, you know, it's usually in the negative sense that in the long term, we're going to have a lot of jobs replaced. So, Gaurav, you know, what are your thoughts on that when people talk about how AI is going to replace jobs and, and change careers? So yeah, I think that this is definitely in the long term a warranted argument, but what I think that could happen is that in the short term, AI has the potential to create more jobs than it actually diminishes. For example, if you think of a company like Element AI that just raised around $150 million in investment, all that money is going to go towards paying the salaries of new employees. They're creating tons of jobs just from a new investment like that. And then there's other companies like in China, over, like over in China, like the Google of China, Baidu, that's investing billions of dollars into the research and development of AI, but also creating more jobs just to further technology. Then there's also Google and IBM investing hundreds of million dollars into the technology. So clearly there's going to be tons more jobs created, and they're not even taking out jobs yet. If you think about also the, the amount of manpower that's going to be needed to further, the, further the technology and really bring it forward, I think that manpower is larger than the man manpower that they're actually taking out by replacing jobs. If you think of a taxi driver being replaced by a self-driving car, think about how many people are needed to make that self-driving car and further that technology and constantly grow and improve it. So basically, companies like Element, Google, Baidu, IBM, et cetera, are looking for tons of talent. But I think that the problem really lies is that the talent might not be there because of the current education system. If a lot of the jobs that were that are around today, like doctors and lawyers and even like sales representative and wealth managers are going to be replaced in the next five to ten years. Why in school are we learning the fundamentals of these jobs and told to go into these jobs when they're not even going to be there? I think that in school we should start learning about AI and really challenge the curriculum right now and even all the way to university and stuff and like extra courses and stuff because right now the only way for me to really learn about AI is to take like a Udacity degree or something like that. I can't even like learn it in college or take any sort of courses outside of school. And then there's programs like the Knowledge Society that help that. But I think that the curriculum for AI and engineering and stuff like that, so we can really prepare for the future, should be there. Because AI really is the future. As Vinod Kosla said yesterday in his talk, everything in the future will revolve around AI. What I think is going to happen that in 10 years, AI startups won't be called AI startups. They'll just be known as startups. That's happening today, and we're going to see it tomorrow. And I think that we just have to be ready for this. And the education system is currently not really doing that, and we need to change something about that. Awesome. <laughs> so, you know, I think when we, when we think about technology and sciences and AI and all these emerging trends, um, you know, you're 15, Ananya, and, you know, you hang around with your friends. Do these kinds of conversations come up at all, or how are your friends thinking about this? Not at all. Um, most of my friends have, they might have heard of AI. Some of them might think Siri is AI. That's the height of, height of their knowledge. Um, it's really interesting to see my peers around me almost no clue what AI, blockchain, genomics, um, tons of these new cool, cool fields actually are. And that's something really interesting to take in because just like uh, Gaurav amazingly brought up, our future is going to be completely different with jobs that are going to be completely different from what exists right now. And if we're learning the same things in school that you were learning in school, um, we might not be prepared for all the changes that are going to happen. 
So it's super important for every student to not only learn the school material, but to find out maybe what they're passionate about and learn it on their own time, go deep. I'm interested in genomics. Uh, Gaurav's great at VR and e-commerce. And it's important for everyone to find out what they're interested in so that we can all make sure we're prepared for the future. And it's not even just for us students, even all of you professionals out there. Uh, if you learn something in college and you're newly graduated, something you're doing in 20 years might be completely different from what you're doing now. So it's super important to always keep learning and understanding that the world will always be changing. I think she also brought up something really important when she mentioned blockchain. And when we think about AI, um, you know, like Gora mentioned, Vinod yesterday talked about all the negative impacts that AI can have. And it only pushes us to advance adjacent industries. And I think in Canada, we're, we're leading many of those industries. You know, we have quantum computing with the Institute of Quantum Computing in Waterloo. We have D-Wave in Vancouver. When we think about blockchain, we have companies like Nuco. We have Decentral, which is led by Anthony Diorio, one of the co-founders of Ethereum. We have a lot of amazing, you know, Bitcoin, a big Bitcoin community here, which again is all based on blockchain technology. I think AI will integrate very strongly into all these areas. Um, Gaurav, tell me about, tell us about what you're working on with Avocado. It's, it's, he, he has a really cool e-commerce store that he's growing right now. Um, tell us about how what you learned there might be impacted by AI, and then we'll, we'll wrap up with that. Sure, yeah. So I run a, a clothing startup. I'm actually wearing one of our sweaters. And basically, the reason my, my friend Sean and I started this is because to expand on the real-world skills that we were learning from programs like TKS that we knew we weren't going to be able to develop or even just like get more skills in school. So the way that we sort of use AI now is we use like analytics and marketing tools by like Google or Facebook or Instagram, wherever we're advertising with AdWords for Google. And a lot of these incorporate AI, but we think that this can really change when it comes to directing traffic to our site. We can use AI to really tailor ads. But I think that this industry can really change because right now you have to set like specifically, oh, where do you want your ad to show up? Like, do you want people in Markham seeing it? Do you want people in like Bangladesh? Or like really specific demographics and stuff. And I think that the way AI can fix this, or improve it, sorry, is just by knowing. So sort of by automatically taking past results and stuff like that and seeing where the interest is when it comes to traffic on your site, AI will definitely help advance this and automate this and overall just help all businesses like my own. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ananya and Gaurav. I hope you guys enjoyed this, this short talk. Um, thank you.